Welcome to another video on our Embedded Craft channel. This video tutorial is about I2C devices. We will explain using I2C device on Embedded Linux. We are going to use C code for reading and writing from EEPROM. And we will use a BeagleBone board. But, you can use any board of your choice. So, relax and watch this video till the end. For this workshop, we have to use serial port and development host with cross-GCC compiler and Eclipse IDE. You can watch these two video tutorials explaining using serial port and debugging of Linux application. This tutorial is for serial port interfacing. And this video shows preparing a Linux host machine for cross-compilation. You will watch installation of Eclipse IDE and cross-compiler as well. Link of both videos is given in description. So, hardware requirement. You can use any board which is capable of running Linux. We are using BeagleBone board. And we are using AT24C02, I2C EEPROM. You will see the circuit diagram for I2C EEPROM in next section. Let us first have a quick look on I2C. I2C is a buses for communication between digital devices. There will be a master and slave. I2C bus will establish communication between these two. Actually there can be more than one slave chips. I2C protocol was developed by Philips, which is NXP nowadays. Question may be, what is the data transfer speed? And the answer is, speed could be up to 3.4 megabits per second. Generally, it is 100 kbps. I2C is a master and slave configuration. Single master and many slaves. I2C has two lines. SDA line and SCL line. SDA is serial data line, and SCL is serial clock line. Data travel on serial data line. Because data can travel in both directions, so SDA is a bidirectional line. Serial clock line provides clock to slave devices. Clock is driven by master device. Question may be, if we have more than one slave on the I2C bus, then how master will identify each device? Answer is, each slave device has own address. This address could be either of 7-bit address or 10-bit address. Most of the slave devices have 7-bit address. We should refer data sheet of I2C device to understand address mechanism. Let us talk more about I2C device address. Understanding I2C device address is very important. If we do any mistake here, we will not reach anywhere. Please read addressing in the manual of I2C chip which you are using. Story will start to review address lines available on each I2C device. For example, this device has three address lines. We can hardwired address line either to ground or to VCC, as per our choice. For example, if A0 is wired to 5 volts and A1, A2 are wired to ground, then address bits will be 0, 0, 1. If you have other device on same I2C bus, then we can change the combination of these address lines. We can create max 8 combinations from 3 address lines. We are using a 24C02E PROM from Atmel. Atmel was acquired by Microchip. User manual of this chip is available from Microchip website. At 24C02 size is 2K. It means the total bits it can store is 2048. It is organized as words of 8 bits. Total words are 256. Each word is randomly addressable. Now question is how to set slave address. If we refer to the datasheet, we find that there will be mandatory 1 and 0 sequences for the first 4 most significant bits. And next 3 bits will correspond to A2, A1 and A0 line. These 3 bits will decide the address of the chip. The last bit is read and write select bit. If master want to read, it will send 1 as last bit. In case of write, master will send 0. Read and write bit is managed by I2C Linux driver. 
because we are using embedded Linux, 7-bit address actually has to be 8-bit address. Bit number 0, belongs to A0. Bit number 1, is for A1. Bit number 2, belongs to A2. And most significant bits are 1010. MSB bit will be considered as 0. We will use 1 byte address. Address will be 0x50. As you know from previous slide that A0, A1 and A2 are 0. Let us see the connection of EEPROM with BeagleBone Blackboard. We are going to use I2C bus 2. I2C SCL line is at port 9 and pin number 19. I2C SD line is at port 9 and pin 20. VCC goes to 3.3 volt. Port 9, pin 3 and pin 4 has 3.3 volt. VCC is wired to pin 4. Address line, A2, A1 and A0, as per our I2C module document is grounded. That's why 7-bit address will 1010 and 000. We are now ready to work on our board. First, let us see if we are able to ping our board. Ping. IP address of board. We are able to ping the board. Now we will open shell here. Type SSH, Debian and IP address. Now we are into the BeagleBone board. I2C detect will detect slaves connected on I2C bus. I2C detect hyphen R. 50 is starting address and 50 is end address. We find our I2C chip available at 50 slave address. Let us try write and read operation. We will write 0x80 to memory location 0 in EEPROM. Command is I2C set hyphen F hyphen Y 0 X 50. This is our EEPROM address on I2C bus. And 0 X 0 is the address where we are writing. 0 X 80 is what we want to write. Great no error. F is for force access. Y is to disable interactive mode. 2 is I2C bus number. Now we will read data. Typing I2C get hyphen Y 2 50 0 from where we want to read. Wonderful, it is returning 80. Let us move to C code. We will use IO control call to access I2C chip. You can read about IO control call by typing man IO control in the terminal. First, we will open I2C bus number 2 in read-write mode. Here we are making I.O. control call with pointer to F. I2C underscore slave is the I.O. control code. I2C underscore address is the value. I2C underscore address is the address of our I2C module, which is 0x50. Question may be what is I2C underscore slave value? For this we have to refer to the driver document. If we open I2C dev.h, we find the value of this. Its value is predefined to 0703. For writing to memory we have to tell memory address and data which we want to write. We want to write 0x30 at location 0x50. And 0x31 to location 0x51. And so on. This I2C driver supports block mode writing and reading. We will prepare a buffer. First entry to the buffer will be memory location where we want to write. So, buff 0 will get 0x50. Other entries into the buffer will be data which we want to write. Buff 1 will be 0x30, because we want to write 0 by 30 to memory location 50. And so on we will prepare the buffer. This is crucial to understand and an important step. And finally we will write this buffer. Length of the buffer is 10 bytes. This is the method of writing data to I2C EEPROM. 
Here is our source code. We are setting pointer to I2C bus 2. This is our I2C slave address, which is 0x0703. I2C address is 0x50. Here we are preparing our buffer. This is the data which want to write to memory location. And here we are going to write to the buffer. Now let us review read operation. Reading is straightforward. Get pointer to I2C bus 2. Set slave device address, which is 0x50. Buff 0, will have device address. Writing buff 0, will set memory location where we want to read. Here we will make all buff array to 0. Finally when we do read, it will read 9 bytes from memory location 0x50. Data will be stored into the buffer. Hope we will read this data. Here we are going to write buffer. Only one byte we have to write. We are going to read buffer. Finally we are going to print buffer. Let us build our project. Binary file is generated. Run this program. Select run configuration option. Here I2CRW is our project. This is our executable file. Let us run. Finally, we able to write and read data from EEPROM chip. We can also debug this program. We should go to debug as. And let's debug. We have a separate video for demonstration of debugging of Linux application. Link is given in the description. Here we are at first line of our main function. Opening I2C bus 2. IO control call. Is setting slave address. Preparing buffer. This is content of buffer. Preparing for the buffer. And in parallel, we can see content is getting updated. We are writing to memory. Now we are going to read. 50 is the address of memory location. Write will set memory address for read. Clearing buffer. And finally we are going to read. As you can see buffer is loaded with data of EEPROM. Let me change the data type to hex. Content buff 0 is 0x30, 0 30, 31, and so on. Because we area 9 bytes, so we have buff 0 to buff 8. So, we have seen using IO control calls in Linux. You can learn more about I2C driver from kernel.org. I2C driver code is available there. If you are interested to know how the device driver is written, then you should go to this path. Root, driver, I2C, and I2C-dev.c. And read about I2C dev read function, I2C dev write, and I2C dev IO control function. SDA and SCL controlling functions are present in I2C-algobit.c file. With this we are going to end this session. Thanks for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe like, and share our video.